Welcome to Time Sync, the weekly podcast to let you know what's worth sinking your time into. I'm your host, Sauce, and this week I'm joined by the beautiful Mr. Hummer. Uh, I'm still confused with the, the pre-game chatter here about cameos, so I don't know about you guys. I'm excited. And the only person who understood that reference, Brad. Uh, let me just clear up what the cameo is. It's a website where you can pay famous to semi-famous to not famous people to give your friends, loved ones, messages so that the rich can get richer off of their appearance and are we doing uh, this for their ben knowledge and, <laughs> and please sign up for my new cameo <laughs> for the total of 350 i will yell at a at a person you love were you gonna say stripper you were gonna say stripper <laughs> When was I going to say stripper? It sounded like you were going to say stripper. I don't know where the where the word stripper Can we actually please get, right right can we please get you set up with a cameo? Can we please get you set up with a cameo now? Yeah, go for <laughs> it. I, I, I doubt anybody. I mean, I'll be the cheapest one on there. Guarantee. I don't know. There's some, there's some like <laughs> D-listers on there that, I don't know, you could definitely. Anyway, we got a great episode for you this week. This week, we're going to talk about We Can Be Heroes, The Dig chef and the crew so stick around we got a good episode but before we get into all that uh just a quick update here this week is going to be audio only focusing on our audio so we can catch up on our video and uh, focus on our social media so if you are addicted to a website like facebook reddit a fourth one a fourth one <laughs> we're probably on there so definitely check us out at time sync pod or you can get a list of all of our sites uh on our website timesyncpod.com check us out give us a like help us grow tell us uh, share us with your friends share us with your enemies it's uh share us with whoever you want especially your enemies especially your enemies keep them, keep them close definitely check out brad's cameo uh help support brad tbd Dude, there's no way we can't get you on here, man. The, the, the lowest one is like 20 bucks, and then you would see Brad for 350 <laughs> Discount. You want some <laughs> random stranger to yell at you? That's your guy. I'm trying to look up who like the most hey, the cheapest, you most you need famous to clean your room. Brian, why didn't you clean your room? Dar- Daryl says clean your room, Brian. John Glaze, John Glazier. I feel like he's the most famous person for 100 bucks. Is that a, the NF, the sportscaster, John Glazer? Uh, or, the actor that, from Parks and Recreation. Oh, cool! Exactly. See, I don't. Uh, I, I'm looking at the most famous, and I just don't know. I don't know. Who there's these people there's are. some decent. You get like flavor. I feel like I feel like Brian Baumgartner is a big one. Who's Kevin on The Office? I see his a lot. We did we did one for our friend that was the voice of the voiceover actress from Widowmaker. Um, Jerry, so. Jerry Springer is only 135 dollars. <laughs> mm. Yeah, do we get that's... that for? Do we get that for our friend's birthday? <laughs> we'll get that for our, uh, an intro. Like you moved out to the East Coast, and and Jerry Springer's kind of breaking down how his video game play has gone downhill since moving to the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> All right, we we got jokes. <laughs> so this week, I wanted to tell you guys about a little movie that you're never gonna watch, called. We can be heroes. You may have seen some of the hype of it on Netflix. Possibly, have you guys seen this at all? It makes me think of a, that song. Is is it a U two song? Maybe it's. Uh, it sounds like it should be a U two song. We can be heroes. I'm pretty sure that, that is a. T- wait, no. Who there's a, the song is on the radio right now, and you've heard it definitely. Called "We Can Be Heroes." Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I have nope. I I could think I could think of the the one phrase that I just sang a second ago, and I'm not going to do it again. But th- but that was all. That's it. Wait, that's what's that song that's on the radio right now? We can be heroes. That's what they're saying, right? I have uh, no idea what you're talking okay. about. You guys don't listen to Top Forty. Well, first Very off, very rarely. It's not even coming up on Apple Music. Oh my god, for we can be. Heroes. I must have. The you lyrics. typed in "We can be heroes" and nothing yeah. came up. Completely. So both nothing, of us are just up. insane. <laughs> what is this? The, the top result is "Heroes," David Bowie. <laughs> What's this? It's on the radio right now. It's like 
Taylor Swift or something. Well, anyway, totally irrelevant. So this is a movie by Robert Rodriguez, one of my favorite directors. But he's also done, you know, all the uh, uh, machetes, but the uh, Lava Boy, or I mean Lava Girl and Shark Boy movies, Spy Kids, which Lava Boy and Shark Boy are like a spinoff of Spy Kids. So it's the sequel, kind of sequel to that. Uh, it's one of those giant green screen movies, you know, highly, highly edited in CGI and green screen for kids. It's a kid's movie. I liked Spy Kids. Spy the Kids flu- is flu- good. The Floopians, what up, bro? But did you like Shark Boy and Lava Girl? I did not. I did not. Not even a little bit. Then you're definitely not going to like We Can Be Heroes because it's in the Shark Boy, Lava Girl universe. It's basically uh, they're part of a team of uh, superheroes, kind of like their version of the Avengers. But it's a story about them grown up. They actually got the same actress for uh, Lava Girl, but they didn't get Taylor Lautner to come back and reprise his role as Shark Boy. He's beyond that stuff now. I don't know about that. (laughs) I saw him in a British sitcom once. That's about all I got. <laughs> He's beyond it. He did an obscure TV show in a foreign country that's one time. <laughs> Is he Ted Lasso? <laughs> <Yeah>. No. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll I'll find him on Cameo. Um, so, it's about their kid and the, all the superheroes' kids, like, you know, getting the opportunity to rise up and, and become heroes. Hence, the sure. We Can Be Heroes. Uh, it is 100% you can't a- find the song by the way what is that song I never found I looked very quickly too and I also got the only thing I got was David Bowie's heroes we could <laughs> be zero it's gonna be like break me off a piece of that football cream, football cream. <laughs> oh my God. What fancy is that feast I'm never gonna find it Um, yeah so one of the best parts about this movie though is that it stars my favorite Indian actress, Priyanka Chopra, is in it. So that was a very pleasant surprise to see her in there. Um, who else is in there? Christian Slater is a superhero. Uh, know that. Pedro Pascal is the main character, the main adult character, which is very exciting. It's a Robert Rodriguez, and he you know worked with him on uh, the episode of The Mandalorian, which... Uh, where spoiler Boba Fett comes back and kicks ass and puts his armor on. Whoa. Did they, there's talk about it, but I don't think they announced that Robert Rodriguez is going to direct the Boba Fett. Is he, did they announce the director for Boba Fett or is it just Favreau and Filoni? I, I uh, assumed they were going to do it similar and have a group of directors. Yeah. But I'd be okay with Robert Rodriguez doing the whole thing. Not <laughs> this style of movie. Uh, yeah, it's exactly what you think it's going to be. It's a, a kid's movie. A, usually like a quality kid's movie, the adult's going to enjoy it too, but my kids liked it. So if you're looking for something to watch with your kids, but my four-year-old and my five-year-old enjoyed it. It sounds like, like if you don't want to get your kids into the current DC or MCU stuff, because it's too adult maybe this is like the answer to like uh, alleviate the uh the transitional phase to growing up to be old enough to like the current superhero movies i don't know it's pretty bad (laughs) it's if you want your kids to watch this movie and love it well at the same time you as a parent absolutely hate this movie just drink more while you then have to watch it with your it. kids. <laughs> it's a, yeah. <laughs> we need to start like a subgenre of movies you drink with, <laughs> with your kids with. <laughs> Did you like Baby Shark? Then stay the fuck away from this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Man, um, I wanted it to be good because I love Robert Rodriguez. It's not it like I think kids movies need to be held to a different standard. Like I feel bad saying a kid's movie is bad when it's clearly made for them, you know? Yeah. But isn't that like the, the thing about a good kid's movie is that it's also tolerable for the adults. Like toy story is a great kid's movie and adults can watch it too. And there's like hidden humor in there for adults. You know, I don't know if that's a qualifier though, for a good kid's movie. Like 
does the adult need to enjoy it for it to be a good kids movie? Yeah, because you're stuck I, I watching think you it need too. To recog- I think you need to be able to recognize like real themes and quality writing and things like that in it. Because like, as the adult, that's the stuff you'll latch onto more and recognize the elements of storytelling that are important to start recognizing at some age to have some development of it. So I think it's okay to judge it based off that. But I also think you're right. The movies aren't for you. The audience is much younger. So if it's received well by a younger audience and it doesn't just force you to buy a whole bunch of toys, it's probably all right. Well, let me ask you this question then. Uh, because you're talking about genres. Like we're getting deep into genres of kids' movies here. Um, <laughs> there's, there, has to always wanted. <laughs> there has to be always wanted. There has to be. Do you see a cutoff point between kids' movies where like you're – all right, two and three year olds definitely probably are a different audience than even say a four and five year old mm-hmm. in terms of what they can comprehend from a story. So you have movies that are like, because I was a couple weeks ago, I was hanging out with a couple that has a two year old and she was watching a show that was just absolutely god awful. But it had to basically be like everything had to be sung in like a, my mommy and daddy go to the store. Yes. What do they do at the store? And for <laughs> what do they do material? there? You know what I mean? Like, it's like very simple by like, alcohol. Ah, yes. But then, but then you can move resolution. Into the, like, you can move into that three-year-old, the four-year-old. We're all of a sudden they're watching Frozen, and you know what I mean. They're watching movies that actually, like you said, have a plot, a story that's good, decent. I mean, at some point, it's the parents' choice to make that kid watch that Dora the Explorer rather than Frozen, right? Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say because. Like my kids do like the you know all those animated Disney movies and it but it, and it took me forever to get them to watch any movie with like a real human in it. They only wanted to watch animated stuff. But my three, I said five and four because they're so close in age; they're thirteen months apart. But she's not; she's four. I don't know in a couple of weeks, she's still three. And like from the middle of her being three, her favorite movie is The Witches, that just came out. Like the remake Ugh. of The Witches, she loves that movie. That, that, it, I don't think that's terrible, but it makes no sense to me because, like, yeah. it's and it, there's one part where she's like really scared, but she still loves watching it. She just like closes her eyes at that part. So I don't know. It's hard to say. Every kid's different. Is it gonna be weird when your daughter's more into horror flicks than you are? <laughs> <laughs> and she starts wearing all black and, like, and like, cuts her hair off. Yeah, that'll be a weird face. Is it gonna be weird when your daughter's and never mind? <laughs> Shut up, Hummer. <laughs> Listen, you can't just groom Frank's kids like that. They're angels. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, uh, if you're an adult man, a single adult man, <laughs> then we could be heroes is probably going to be a one unless you're some weird diehard shark boy and lava girl, hardcore fan, <laughs> then you probably won't like it either. Cause they recast shark boy. So, uh, as a parent, uh, I would probably recommend something else to watch with the family all together. But if your kid's looking for something to watch, you know, and you need a nap. The highest possible, yeah, and you need a nap. The highest possible <laughs> score I can give this movie is if you're a little kid <laughs> by yourself, I'd give it a three. Especially by yourself. <laughs> With your parents are sleeping. Whatever happened to just, you know, the everybody being obsessed with the Disney movies, you know, like the one where they're like, they're wearing rollerblades and you had a skate off, you know, and then one where you had a. Brink, and then you had another one with Johnny Tsunami. Yo, you you're know. talking the Disney Channel original movie era, which yeah. we were on the tail end of. Which the best two are Motocross, Smart which House, is, which is a Shakespearean, a Shakespearean re- a modernization, and then uh, my stepsister from Planet Weird, where the girl was some and her dad was some form of alien that were actually bubbles. And they were afraid of the wind. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, I've seen that movie once in my life, but for some reason it stuck with me. And every time it's really windy, all I think is when she would like look off in the distance when the wind would blow, she'd go, oh, I fear the wind. 
<laughs> Dude, we, that we, makes we're me definitely laugh not in the so tail hard. End. We're Why definitely is not that? in the tail end of Disney Channel. Yes, we are. We are. We are the 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 Disney Channel original movies started in '83, and they are still going today. I meant the tail end of like the big popularity with the with the Disney Channel, like because the that's hard millennials. For well, a lot exactly. of like the like, big ones, I'm smack dab in the in the millennial millennial. Uh, I guess technically on the elder side. But yeah, the, on the older Brink, side. 1988, Brink, 99, uh, Johnny Tsunami. Uh, I don't. I remember all those movies too, but like we were starting to become Rip girls. We that weren't pre. Good. We were not preteen anymore, but which, which was like preteen, early teen audience. I it's was like, ten years old in '98. Okay, so I was 12, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> I can't do that kind of math. <laughs> am I the oldest one here? <laughs> yes. Are you guys old? What am yes. I doing? Yes, well, <laughs> comparatively. <laughs> I was born in 87, the best A- year. 87. Sorry, the, year, the year nobody thinks about. So you you guys were 11 exactly. years old when Brink came out. You were still preteens. You were the yeah, target. But I market think of like the Brink Disney Channel Tsunami. ones, I guess. And and most of them I feel like I was like 14-ish when they started to be big. Well, like Brink when it came out, and, and same thing with Johnny Sound, we were the target audience for those. Like there yeah, was that's like fair. high uh, not high school, but like you know, grade school B B that didn't matter. I never seen on never watched the Disney Channel growing up. I only watched The Simpsons and Cartoon Network. And that and friends, that was it. Man, they did so many racially sensitive movies in those times. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been all about it. I didn't know. <laughs> Funny thing is, I'm going through like the list of all these movies that they did, and really, they just went straight downhill after Johnny Tsunami. I mean, you luck of the Irish. Smart House. I do know there about was, Smart House. There was the one that featured like tons of Lawrence Brothers. The, the Lawrence Brothers all got like eight different movies in those eras. It, the the end of the eras were like Hannah Montana and uh, with the Vic, Victoria Justice and iCarly and all those. The, granted, those two I think are Nickelodeon technically, but that was like the end of all. Mom's of that. got a date with a vampire. I feel like I motocross. Oh yeah, Mom's got a date with a vampire. You're just gonna throw some of these names out there, and I'm gonna fly off into like reminiscent <laughs> mode of these Disney Channel movies that I watch so much of. It's ridiculous. I'm actually trying to find the Luck of the Irish one. I'm having trouble finding that one. Kim Possible is when it definitely starts to fall off. That one was you can. A lot of those movies are on Disney Plus. If you're looking, yeah, to that's very true. Live. Yeah, I know. I, I it, it came back because I was thinking I watched Brink uh, probably about a month or two ago, and I'm like, how did I like this movie? But then, like, half soul of the- skaters. I know why bro. I like this movie because <laughs> <laughs> they were soul skaters, man. Yeah, man. Not Money doesn't sellouts. matter. Money doesn't matter. Why were you guys such cooler preteens than me? <laughs> <laughs> Um, listen, let's, if we go into that, we're going to start breaking down racial, racial and economic barriers, <laughs> but, but that's what the show is created for. That's and re- we do what we do <laughs> and relationship advice. <laughs> so Hummer, tell me about, tell us, tell the world about the dig in a movie that in a universe where something actually happened and they wanted to tell a story. An archaeologist embarks on an historic, important evac- evacuation excavation <laughs> of Sun Ho. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, I, didn't, I was like, man, this can't get too much worse, can Hold it? on. Hold on. <laughs> if it's a movie about an evacuation and it's called The Dig, is this a proctology movie? <laughs> so I'm yeah. highly interested. Uh, so it's a, it's a biography drama historical movie um it's it has voldemort um ralph finn is in it 
Willie James, Kerry Mulligan. Ralph Fiennes? Isn't it? I thought I was it was Fiennes. Ray, Ray Fiennes. Fiennes, is it Ray? Fiennes, Finneys, Finez, Ralph, F-I-N-E-N. It's Voldemort, okay? That's all I could think about every time I saw hey, him. Like, he's Voldemort. It's he who shall not be named. I am not afraid. I am not afraid to say his name. It's actually, it, was, it started off really good. Um, it was really interesting. Basically, the the story is there. All of like British history can trace themselves back to like the Anglo Saxons, right? They're the ones who founded uh, England as we know it today. And there wasn't a lot of history dating back to that period of time. And all of the artifacts that England has can be basically traced back to this one dig. And this guy who who's the main character, Basil Brown. Uh, he's he's considered an amateur uh, archaeologist or an amateur excavator. He uh, and so he kind of looked down upon in the industry, and it's kind of his his story where he gets hired by this family to dig up these mounds. They what they end up finding is a a long and call the spoiler alerts, but it's 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 history, so I don't I don't consider the spoiler alerts. <laughs> uh, they basically they he finds the ship and it contains a whole bunch of good stuff in there from bake in the anglo-saxons when they first came over like a burial ship they figure out the burial site because it's like yards away f- from uh from the nearest river which means that someone had to physically carry the ship up a hill and then bury it uh, but as they discover this then all of a sudden it, it's 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 a story about it getting taken away from him and then just like the whole the whole show movie is just a that's where it starts to drag on uh, because this is where i'm going to hopefully save you guys some time because it just drags on they drag it on about 45 minutes longer than what it actually needed to be. Um, it's a two hour long movie and they dragged it on exactly 45 minutes longer than it needed to be. It's okay. If you like historical movies and you like being bored for 45 minutes <laughs> at the end of it, you know, go watch it. Uh, I think I give it two and a half stars. It gets a little bit of ready, rating on internet movie database 7.2, but it, just for me, it just, it moves so slow at the end when it's just like, it's so obvious what's about to happen. Like there's just, it's Hollywood, man. Put some suspense into historics, okay? Did the Americans win World War II after Pearl Harbor? I don't know. All I know is that we crashed into a field and we've queued to Ben Affleck in a, in a field with a son named Danny, okay? I don't know. Is the war still going on? I don't know. Dude's a prisoner of war, all right? Get sent home. Here, there's no mystery. There's no mystery. You know what's going to happen the whole time and they just drag it on and on and on and on, just like I am with this review. <laughs> but that is done. Is is this another one of those Netflix uh, movies? Because I saw it had a limited release in theaters. It then- is. Look, this is definitely going to be right up some people's alley. I just think from a historical movie perspective, it, it just got to a point where like, I was so into it. And then all of a sudden I was so out of it. And my Who, wife. Whose alley would this be up? <laughs> I mean, also the, up? also the tagline for that other movie I was making up. <laughs> I really just want to talk about an old movie. That's really what it is. Um, I honestly, no. got stuck on the name Basil. Was when yeah. you said that there was someone named Basil, and, and I was stars. like, "If you I like history like, movies, in particular, three. I was like, "That's a cool name. Why hasn't the name Basil made a comeback?" Ooh, fun fact. Uh, back in my Catholic grade school days when i we had to do our confirmation we had to pick a confirmation name your and i basil. picked basil because it was cool so what's I your middle that, name i think that if you named what everybody basil today they would just automatically be called basil i just wanted i just you'd wanted be, to be like frank basil you'd be, basil you'd be upset about it <laughs> i had to pick a name in french class and i picked the name i thought was guy because I was like, ha that's funny. I could just be guy. And my teacher was like, no, 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 it's gay. And I was like, what? <laughs> and she was like, you are gay. And I was had to be stuck as gay for, for a, a semester, and uh, like a full semester. And I was fucking gay. That's the really? dumbest name. Roberto, gay? Gay. gay. <laughs> I was so mad. I was like, gonna, I was like, man, this is perfect. Run up my humor just for everyone to have to go, look at this guy. <laughs> look at this fucking guy over here. Look at this guy. But gee. I was gee. Damn gee. So if over you here, can't over find here and get this gee, girl. If you can't find Brad on Cameo, just make sure you look under gee. You better not put me as gee. <laughs> I hate that name. <laughs>
on his camera is gonna be come get this gi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put it on your celebrity uh, feet we- wiki feet website. Is that is that where my feet pictures are posted? Wiki feet? It's where everyone's feet <laughs> pictures are posted. <laughs> You guys don't know about wiki feet? Tito taught me about it. <laughs> so, Hummer, I know one of the things that's important to us is not just talking about what's new and, and what's out right now, but when you're scrolling through Netflix, when you're scrolling through Hulu or HBO and something pops up that wasn't there before, even if it's an older movie or an older TV show, you want to know it's worth your time. So you recently saw Chef in there, right? Correct. So basically what happened is we've been talking about John Favreau for how many months now? Every, every episode. Every Thousands episode. Thousands of years ago. <laughs> uh, the podcast is now called The John Favreau Show. And relationship and, advice. Yeah, for in, in John Favreau's the relationship The John advice. Favreau and OW instead of... All right, moving on. <laughs> so either way, we've been talking about him, but I've been seeing this movie pop up in my feed, um, <laughs> Chef. And I saw you know, a picture of John Favreau right on the front of it. I'm like, hmm. And I kept saying to myself, I want to watch that. I want to watch that. I want to watch that. So I finally put it on and wow. Uh, it was nothing short of phenomenal. Wow. I thought it was a, a great movie. It, have you ever had a point in like a movie or a TV show where like everything's like, oh, this is going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. And it just comes to a screeching halt and you get this like you're made uncomfortable by the movie of what's happening. Like the, the main character act, you're just uncomfortable but then you're like, okay, you get through it, and then you get to the rest of the film, and you're just like so happy at the way like they turn the story around from that like like basically the climax of the movie was not a climax but a valley, like you see this guy hitting rock bottom, and then his shoot up isn't some like meteoric like oh my god this is over over exaggerated crazy this could never happen and I'm telling the story in a very vague way because I don't want to give away any plot points here. I just loved the roller coaster of emotions that the movie took you on. It had adventure, it had comedy, it was a drama, but the acting in it was also phenomenal. The cast, uh, even for 2014, this was a gigantic cast. Like, I don't know how I never noticed that this movie existed. Um, because I'm going to start, I don't even know where to start. If this is the bottom or not, you know, Scarlett Johansson. So, so Robert Downey Jr. What? Really? Yeah. And then John, I'm going to let you guys pronounce the last name. Le- Leguizamo. Le- Leguizamo, hysterical. And then John Favreau. Like, that's a great cast. Oh, shit. I got to watch this movie now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and Sophia v- <laughs> Vergara. Oh, seriously? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. She's my most favorite person in the world. <laughs> she's, <laughs> it's her and then Scarlett and then Priyanka Chopra. <laughs> and where's Margaret? She's not she, uh, she doesn't do it for me. That's it. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> so I mean the cast is phenomenal. They they do a great job with the acting. The story is phenomenal and that it's and I didn't know this until till our pre-show. Get give a big shout out here to Brad cuz he has all the good recommendations. Yes, um, I watched this show 6 years ago. This movie when it came out. <laughs> <laughs> I might have seen it in theaters. It was back in those days. <laughs> If you can recall, what is What's that? What's a theater? <laughs> uh, but it's based off a true story. So it's based off a true story. And he actually, John Favreau has a, a show called The Chef Show. Uh, which was a spinoff from the Favreau film Chef. Where Wait, did he, you say what co-host... Chef was about and I missed it and I zoned out? Yeah, Chef <laughs> show, Chef is about a true story about a chef. He, he didn't really go into the plot of it. But if you want... I don't want to go into the plot because... If you want a it's... quick summation... The character is a classically trained French chef, is working as a sous chef, and hates it just like most sous chefs do, because chefs are not happy people. He's not a shoot. He's not a sous it, chef. Yeah, he's working as the sous or first chef in a French not restaurant in for no, some he's not. owner. He's yes, the head he chef. is. He's the head chef. No, but it's but he's making other people's recipes basically. And he's the head chef and he won't he's not he's making his own recipes he's just not allowed to this is why i didn't want to get in the plot not his restaurant it's not his restaurant is the key but it is his recipes it's his food and he, the owner is the one who's kind of shutting him down from make, going outside of what they've established as the menu is them too he's not a sous chef though there's a big difference there uh, 
Anyways, he leaves that situation, starts a food truck that sells primarily Cubano sandwiches. See, now you're just now you're getting so many plot points that it's destroyed. Just destroyed. Boo. It's not some <laughs> WandaVision mystery, bro. It, if you've never makes, seen it, he if makes you've never Cubanos. Seen it, you they're the it. best. It's the best sandwich you will ever have. Is the Cubano style sandwich? It's a muy delicioso. I feel like if it came up in the trailer, it's not a spoiler. Does it come up in the trailer? I don't know. He, I'm makes, just... I'm, he makes Cuban sandwiches in the trailer. You want to learn how he makes Cuban sandwiches? Watch the movie. Oh, I'm watching the trailer. You want to learn how the food truck business goes for him? Watch the movie. Look, it's, it's exaggerated. An, it, it's but such it's an based old on a true story. movie that after watching it, it is something that you should watch. It's a four. Yeah, I agree. It was very good. It was really well done. It's uh, it doesn't have to rely on lots of like twists and turns of things. It's just a a story based on somebody that took an opportunity and created success. Oh. And John Favreau took a lot of interest in him personally, which is why the heart of there was so much heart in the movie because he had personal interest in the story of this person's life who then if you want to learn more about him you can watch the chef show which is john favreau and the guy that the that the movie chef is based on doing more cooking things they cook with other celebrities they go to restaurants and watch other chefs cook and then cook for those chefs it was a pretty cool concept for a cooking show i can't say i watched a lot of it but if you like cooking shows it's a really good one past watching the movie chef which was also really good. I give them both boards. Yep. And so now I can add my antidote. John Favreau is actually. Did you say also... antidote? He did, but he meant anecdote. I'm pretty <laughs> anecdote, sure. Anecdote. <laughs> anecdote. 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 Whatever. <laughs> Either <laughs> way, I'm pretty sure I'm dead after this episode. Ends. <laughs> Either way, it is the pill that you swallow to understand where <laughs> Mr. Favreau is coming from. Uh, he became Same obsessed bit. with cooking and he hired a bunch of uh, professional chefs to train him in all of the techniques. Um, so actually when you watch him like actually cooking and he's doing like the, the hardcore chopping techniques, he's actually really good. And so that was one, I think one of the inspirations behind the film. Look, it's really good. It's an old one. Honestly, it's, it's, it's old turned new again from Netflix. Watch it. Just watch it. Just like Top Gun. Watch it. I actually had two uh, i had two movies i wanted to watch to review but i ran out of time because i had like a super crazy week but now i'm thinking maybe i'll just watch the chef and the i'll watch chef instead it was awful it's one watch top gun first (laughs) (laughs) yeah i think i actually i'm gonna watch chef before i watch i'm gonna watch uh I, i still need to watch black messiah and um this other movie that my friend recommended that he said is a marriage story style devastating that I'm not even going to say the name because it'll that's a, it's a teaser officially you gotta, teased. You got to tell me the name. <laughs> I'll tell you off there, but Brad's got to tell me about the crew right now. Ooh. All right. We're not going to stick very long on this show. The crew, the crew popped up in my Netflix is a brand new Netflix sitcom. It was currently in the top 10 somewhere. I don't know where. I don't care where. That's not important. The crew is a star, uh, stars uh, Kevin James. That's who it is. Um, it's uh, produced by him. I'm sure he's got all sorts of involvement. It is a. It takes place as, as part of a NASCAR pit crew. Is the setting of the sitcom. And the I watched three episodes... And I am here to tell you that this is my first ever zero that I will give out. It 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 uh, it uh, it probably will have an audience, probably the same people that watched that really dumb Tim Allen show, Last Man Standing, I think it was called, because it's the same thing. It's uh, presenting uh, for an audience that's like out of touch and can't understand newer people with newer ideas. And then trying to find balance with them because the target audience is the old out of touch people. But this time it's part of a NASCAR crew. (laughs) NASCAR. Which has a fan base, I guess. I don't ever really meet NASCAR fans. 
I see their flags waving from their trucks, and I drive on the other side of the road, probably. Whatever the equivalent is of crossing the street for the when you with the U's on the sidewalk is how I treat NASCAR fans in cars. As soon as you mentioned it's about NASCAR, I you were so checked out. I, I you was, were like, mm, but pillows. I immediately yep, because that's where my brain goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the U shape. See, I'm a side sleeper. <laughs> it was the first word that came to my head. <laughs> but, as soon as you said it's a show about NASCAR, though, I immediately thought of Tim Allen's show, and I immediately thought this is for a very specific set same people. Of people, same people. Um, he, for fans of Cobra Kai, you might remember one actor who is also in this show. Um, that weird, annoying car sales guy who flopped off of Daniel LaRusso's auto shop to the other guys just to flop back late, later in the show for some reason. I oh. think his character might have the same name, too, because I think it's Amir both times. I think it's a mesh in... Uh, in ah, well, it's Amir in the, in the uh, crew so and a just, mesh in the... So I see that you're one Ooh. of the target demographics for the you show. You think I wear this... You think I wore this trucker hat for a reason? <laughs> of course, NASCAR. Woo! I've got a, I got a good NASCAR story. Is it, is it just quoting? Have Ricky you been Bobby? to a NASCAR? Have you <laughs> been to a NASCAR race? I have been to a NASCAR race because, oddly enough, my super Mexican father loves NASCAR, or at least did for a long time, to the point where he would take me. Um, so when I was a little kid. We went up to a place in Michigan. I don't remember the name. MIS, Michigan sure. International Speedway. That yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> I I don't know. I was five, but uh, there was a. Uh, my dad is a very intimidating, scary Mexican man, and uh, he's I, basically Danny Trejo. He's yes, that is a <laughs> perfect like. It, put that image in your head. He is not. Yes, he not even a little bit. You don't know him like I know him. You don't know him. He's a Gro big, he's a big old softy. Growing up, he was a Danny Trejo, like because oh. he had to be. But uh, so <laughs> that's still in him, you know. Because like, he had to be. <laughs> listen, my dad is seventy-four. Jesus, your dad is old, and he still works out three hours a day. Like he could be all of our asses at the same time. No I question. wasn't doubting that, but <laughs> I also am lazy and haven't fought anyone since the sixth grade. But it's important that you get this image in your head because uh, so we were at NASCAR. What is, what is fighting? I, I don't understand <laughs> the concept here. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, the three of us is probably a bad example. But anyway, he uh, we were there and um, we were bite. outside. There's vendors and they're selling, you know, food and clothes and merch and stuff. And some dude grabbed like a rack of hats from like one of the stands, one of the vendor stands and mm -hmm. is like booking it. And as he's like running away, trying to escape with this rack of hats, knocks me over. I hit my head on the ground. I'm like five or six and I pass out. My dad immediately sees this happen and flies into this mad rage and chases after the dude. And he's instead got, of looking after his son that's on the ground. There, there was I don't know. There's a cop <laughs> there, like I, or something. I don't know. Like, there, there's people looking after me. Revenge <laughs> is more important. Exactly. Your dad, like your dad, looks at the cops and goes, "Take care of the boy." <laughs> he he, he sees two dudes running away, and he has a pair of binoculars because. You need him to. I guess we were up in the stands. Grabs the dude, throws him down, knocks him out with a set of binoculars, and grabs the second guy and starts beating the crap out of him. And like in the middle of his rage, like the dude's like yelling at him. He doesn't know what he's saying until he finally realizes like that he's trying to tell him like like he stole the hats from my shop. <laughs> like, like, this guy, like the first guy that he knocked out, like. That's the guy I was trying to stop. He just saw him running together. So he just attacked both of them. So my dad immediately grabbed me. And after I came to him, I was like, we got to get out of here. <laughs> 
We have to leave before they recognize us. He he goes back to you in the costume. No there one can know my yeah, name. No, no, he got away. They went that way. They both went that way. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, that that's my NASCAR story. The only NASCAR reference in the show, the crew I understood was the name Jeff Gordon. I it. might actually, I might actually give it a give it a Don't, go. Whatever you you're an adult, you do what you got to do. <laughs> I mean, but I'm telling you, it's talking about NASCAR. I'm telling uh, you, I watched three I episodes. I, I watched three episodes, and it carried it, it gained garnished about ten to fifteen percent of my attention. Now, there were multiple laugh lines full of you know canned laughs. There now, y'all, y'all just listen here right now. Okay, I have seen my nonsense. fair share of NASCAR races. Okay. Uh, we had season tickets to Bristol for several years. We have been to Daytona 500s. We have been to Talladega. Okay, and um, so I might just give just go ahead and give this show a chance and just uh, you know, see what kind of billboards they can present to me in terms of advertising for these drivers. Okay, and um, yeah, we'll we'll go from there. Okay, listen, when we record the next episode after you watch this, I request you do it all in camouflage so we don't have to see you. <laughs> you're the one with the trucker hat listen this was a prop <laughs> up until about I have up to until give about, this back to the stage hand when I'm done up until <laughs> about uh, three weeks ago I was the proud owner of a full 100% leather UPS number 88 Dale Jarrett NASCAR hat my wife finally made me get rid of it after I'd <laughs> had it for, for 15 plus years. She goes, no, you will not wear it because I pulled it out. I'm like, oh, my God, my damn, my, my NASCAR hat. And she goes, no, no, no. <laughs> and uh, she made me get I, rid of I it. Didn't, I didn't know UPS was ever one of his big sponsors. I remember Pepsi. For Dale and- Jarrett. Dale Jarrett. Oh, not... see, it. no idea. <laughs> yeah, see, we're, get, we, we're getting down in the weeds here I of still NASCAR have drivers. Jeff Gordon. Yeah, you got well. Yeah, Jeff Gordon. You okay? You got Dale Jarrett. You got Ryan Listen, Newman. You can just go. You got, you got Gary Garrett. You got <laughs> Hardy Garrett and their Hardy Junior. And I think those are all real people. Well, Dale Earnhardt was the best. But hey, he don't died. you put that name, man, in your mouth? He I died. still think if we had told all NASCAR fans that he was responsible, that uh, Osama bin Laden was responsible for Dale Earnhardt's death, we would have found him real quick. He would have had some Southerners. Take their fishing boats over to Iraqi and kill all them, all them cave dwellers. Yeah, now let's not let's and not that's let's the not end alienate of my our friends in the Please south. Don't okay? cancel me. <laughs> oh my god, I have so much editing to do. <laughs> do, do not disparage our friends in the south. <laughs> I'm friends with many Muslim Americans, and they would find that very offensive or hilarious. Because I wasn't, I made fun of the the Southerners more. I'm friends with many Southerners, and they would not find that funny. Yeah. Well, I don't not. have many friends, and I think that's hilarious. They're probably just, they're just going to be like your all your friends from the South can be like you guys just literally think that all the South is is uh, better flags and NASCAR. Is there more? I don't know. I've been to Asheville. I've yet that the sentence didn't seem wrong. Well. That was fun. I've been to the doctor. I've been to the mountains. I still want my sea shanty. We're past that. <laughs> oh, we are not. <laughs> they lost like 40,000 subscribers. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know if that's true. I made that up. Welcome they probably to fake didn't, news. How many people actually unsubscribe to stuff? I did actually finally unsubscribe to Wall Street Bets, though. <gasps> um, it's become you a place. You don't like news stocks? <laughs> It's not just meme stock. All it is is people talking about like GameStop. I'm like GameStop's so three weeks ago. It's over, dudes. Like it's gone. It's done. It's not happening again. People want to reminisce the good times. No, it's all the people who are the bag holders. It's like lots of money. We're going back to. We're going back to the moon. No, moon's gone. We already went to the moon. We came back. All right, the moon <laughs> was a round trip. Okay. It was a round Go trip. there. You come back. All right. So uh, remember when we were going to talk about office replacements? <laughs> I do remember that suggestion. And I think there's no better time than right now to talk about the topic of how do you replace the office in your mm-hmm. life? Saving it, saving it 
That's a whole episode. That's for sure. Well, that's episode. all the time we have on Time Sync this week. That's actually a really good one because I was actually just thinking about today. I was like, damn it, I want to watch a like put the office on in the background. And I'm like, I don't want to pay for freaking Peacock. And I'm like, oh, Parks and Rec. Ah, oh, dang it. They got me yep. again, those dirty sons of bitches. That's why we need to do an episode on what can replace it. It's funny when we're all going to pick NBC comedies, though, which will all eventually only be on Peacock. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> uh, P- I, honestly, Peacock will probably get my money when... Squirrel! It basically, it's which which streaming service do I replace it with just solely so I could watch The Office? Or do I just buy The Office outright? Mm, or pirate it illegally. So, well, yeah. Brad, mm. do you want to do the outro this week? We no, I just thought it would be funny. I don't really care. I can do I I have the power. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna edit out pretty much all of that southern NASCAR racist <laughs> shit. What? Thank there you. Was no racistness on that on my part. So if you're catching up to this audio and you hear a <laughs> big gap, <laughs> it's because I edited out. I'm being a, serious. A I didn't hear racist shit, Brad. Said. <laughs> it no, wasn't sorry, sorry. just I object to that editing. <laughs> so Brad, I don't. Why don't you go ahead and take us out, Brad? Well, the sound of Frank's Pomeranian barking means another show has ended. Thanks for listening this week. Maybe catch up to us next week or the next time we record. Apparently, we're going to talk about shows that you can replace us on The Office with or whatever we said previously. Check us out on Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Reddit maybe, YouTube. I think we started a TikTok. Come to Frank's house and shovel his snow driveway. He needs help, apparently. Bought a snowblower today. Yeah, and I bought a snow globe, but that doesn't help you do anything positive. Thanks again. Have a great night. Apparently, we have a website, too. TimeSinkPod.com, right? And we'll see you guys next week. Tito alive? Uh, I hope so. I think we should all <laughs> give a moment of silence for our fallen hero T. T- <laughs> <laughs> Got T and G and Ryan Hunt. Listen, you just gave us a great idea for a show when Tito and I go off on our own. <laughs> well, we go duo because like, we, we won't be going so unless we can't, we can't go so together. Geet? Gigi or Geet? Now I wish this was a video episode so I could put like a little picture of you and Tito in the bottom, like standing back to back with your arms crossed. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. Do you Tito. have one? I, I no, mean... Tito and I don't photograph well together. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I have blurry face syndrome. <laughs> He's just born that way.